You are from to go beyond sports with me, Sonali Gupta, bringing to you stories of inspiration and empowerment from the world of sports. On a mission to encourage every individual in choosing an active, lifelong journey of health and well-being. Today, our guest with me is Dr. Tejal Kumar. She is a doctor of medicine, MD, focused on obstetrics and gynecology. She is on a mission to create the best fitness experience for every child to develop a lifelong love for play. She is using technology as an enabler for educators. The aim is to make fitness accessible and affordable, immersive and effective by creating skilled fitness educators across geography. With the Clinic Academy, Tejal aims to upskill and reskill coaches, parents, teachers in technical and non-technical competences in kids, sports, and fitness. So thank you, Dr. Tejal, for welcome, for joining me in today, and a warm welcome to you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the kind introduction. and uh, very excited to be on this platform and very very happy to meet you again uh, after many years of working i think with the same school as your uh, son goes to right thank you so much he has been a part of your program and i think whatever i'm going to be chatting with you today really comes out of a lot of first hand experience as well so i'm going to jump in and ask you this question first can you explain about your mission in more words especially about the part when you talk about preparing kids for life preparing kids for life uh, this is something that we've seen like a huge uh, i would say many parents and today's generation parents are being exposed to a lot of options for developing various life skills for children that is financial literacy coding skills math skills improve this skills and those skills you know a lot of academic related skills and sports specific skills are uh, being focused upon like football skills and various other sports so when we want to focus on what we want to focus on is creating more physically literate individuals in our generation in the youth of uh, the future so of course there has been an onslaught of uh, screens and various gadgets over the last many years but in spite of that we now can use the same technology and the same available resources which are tech enabled to enhance the fitness experiences of uh, the youth and uh, for the children i think that is where a lot of focus is now beginning to start it's very nascent but it is there a lot of players uh, like us have also kind of understood that this is where we really need to again start focusing on because even if you're doing academics or coding or any kind of sitting activity if the body is not physically active and preparing for those mental activities i don't think uh, it is going to work so physical activity enhances that focus and equips the mind also to develop better memory and you will see the results in academics as well so that focus is coming up though it is uh, at a very nascent stage it is there in other nations but in india we have been very focused on academic and it is shifting slowly because a lot of our parents itself are participating in various outdoor activities gym activities marathon activities and when they are be- becoming more and more aware of their own health they are concerned about their children especially after this uh, pandemic so our mission is very clear to equip the parents with the right knowledge and give them all the enablers you know through technology as well as through various other tools provide the uh, you know the right certified coaches uh, which we are trying to develop through our academy uh, upskill the coaches today uh, with the right kind of kids fitness knowledge and develop more and more fit kids and create more knowledge and awareness amongst the future generation so they develop fitness as a habit within their daily lifestyle it's just like waking up going to brush your teeth 
and going for a workout it becomes a part of their daily routine and the second part is fitness must be considered as a skill in itself so that is uh, something that we want to focus upon like fitness is not just something that you need to get motivated to start doing it is part of a daily routine it, it should come right. very naturally to the child right. so that's what our mission is though it looks very challenging but yes that is how we want to go about yes. it yes yes so tell me how has your personal journey of being physically fit and being physically active while um, you are a doctor and uh, primarily doctors are really cramming through a lot of studies during their uh, years of education how did you bring about and influence not only your own self but also influence your work that you are doing today so as a child as a kid and all of us uh, during those years before the gadgets and the screens came into our lives we were all active so i don't remember sitting idle in any of the pt periods so even in those times we used to have only twice a week for pt periods and that right. is uh, reduced even now uh, right. you know it's gone to one week uh, pt period in uh, today's uh, schools i remember going and playing in every single pt period so that was a given and i used to walk to school uh, which was about a 15 minute uh, walk and either walk to school or even ride bicycles and after coming back home also there used to be gully cricket that i used to participate in so it's been a very it's been there in in my life as a very strong routine it was like a given it is not even that we put in any kind of effort to uh, do right. this and the family background also where you give a lot of focus on home cooked food and all the right well balanced uh, food and how nutrition and protein is so important in spite of being from a gujarati family we were very open minded about how Uh, non-vegetarian food or eggs are so important uh, right. in building muscles and you know strong bones. So right. uh, uh, we have a large family of uh, my siblings and my cousins have always been under this uh, education from our elders that it is important to have the right kind of protein because vegetarian food is lacking in protein. So that's the kind of uh, uh education from our own family that uh, we've had so that's what i'm taking forward to my children but it's much more challenging for our generation of parents because our parents did not have this uh, screen time and uh, so much of sitting time they we have different challenges and absolutely no playbook no one to tell us uh, how to go about bringing up the future generation so we have our own challenges but uh, the idea is to create a uh, different ways and methods to uh, develop this fitness skill in in the children you know so right. that is where the struggle is but uh, through storyification gamification and working upon the mental and emotional well being of the child we right. will get there so that's right. the uh, focus right now So how do you think the schools and primary parents and children are actually responding to this idea of think of of how you advocate this to be a learning place are they really as open as uh, we we really would want them to be or have have we kind of also become complacent with the idea that this is how the generation is and you know there isn't much that we can do or there is only that much that we can push them or are the kids ready to take away their screen time and change it into a little bit more of fitness are they are they willing to go out there and be more active so there are three uh, so we have parents uh, we have kids and we have the schools and parents and schools are the gatekeepers mainly parents so right. because parents only finally decide uh, which school to enroll the child in right so right. it is very important for the parent to uh, you know make sure that what it is that they want from the school 
and then choose the schools and parents are getting aware uh, they've seen the children just getting stuck on their uh, screens and devices but at the same time parents need to develop their own uh, habits into you know not letting the children learn uh, the wrong things from them so they need to inculcate the right habits within themselves be mindful about their own habits in front of their children because children are just going to learn by example they're going to look at the parents and that's what they imbibe a child's world is really really small uh, we we are thinking of about ukraine and russia and all of that but a child is just so uh, focused on the things around uh, them right so it's just about the parents the grandparents and the house help and his friends in the building and the friends in the school and the teachers that's right. the child's world and in that world we need to influence them we need to lead them by example and that's that's the most important thing but now what has happened is the child is also exposed to gadgets and this whole google search and so many things on youtube right and we are exposing them to all the wrong things so we really need to be mindful as parents that okay we may be leading by example but uh, you may be going for your marathons but are you really paying attention to what the child is going through what the child is absorbing uh you know around him so that is something that uh, we need to be very mindful about schools on the other hand also are now getting aware that they need to create more fun activities which will be distracting for the child from going away from the screens and uh, you know doing more of outdoor activities right. in the last 2 years we did we, we did try to you know online fitness uh, was of course uh, we had to do uh, everything online but we realized that engaging uh, kids uh, on an active screen time really paid huge dividends okay a lot of children who were sitting for like 8 hours at a stretch on online school and then for online tuition and some chess activity and all that they were very happy to parents were really seeing the results and they come even for that one hour Uh, on our online fitness class and really sweat it out you know making sure we make sure that all the groups of muscles all the joints there are so many animal walks and engaging activities that we design for the online fitness class and we also created a lot of things out of thin air you know and uh, right. we were quite innovative the team really con- you know we had a lot of brainstorming sessions as to how to make sure that we deliver the best program online so it's been a huge learning for us and the schools were very very supportive uh, in right. that sense and right. some of the schools were very very clear that we need to do this for our children they've been sitting so uh, often but on the other hand majority of schools unfortunately could not continue with their pe because they have large number of kids and they were challenged with laptops and uh, you know taking technology to the uh homes of working parents parents also cannot sit with the small kids uh, on the online activities for too long so a lot of challenges in the last couple of years but everything has taught us and especially the schools are now really open to physical activities and the nep the government itself they have come up with the new education policy where it really emphasizes on sports and physical activity right. as part and parcel incorporated in the curriculum so we are building it uh, to be part of the curriculum uh, the speciality that we have is gamified fun fitness uh, where a lot of uh, motivation is included for the child because kids love competition right. they want to be right on top but at the same time we make sure that we do not uh, we make sure that kids are not demotivated right so making sure it's all inclusive and all the kids are engaged in this particular program right. and that's what uh, the modern schools are quite uh, happy with so schools are uh, you know slowly trying to get into this uh, kind of a way of delivering fitness right so right. they're so quite is, open is, to it so we are very happy you, sorry so this is where when you were previously talking about physical literacy right so it's about also adding some kind of a movement uh, while a child uh, 
could be good at running and there is another one who could be skipping and another one who could be dancing as long as they are physically active and choose to be physically active so tell me then what do you think is the difference between the existing structure of the physical education that we have and then what you were talking about in terms of physical literacy uh so i mentioned uh, you know riding a bike is a skill um skipping a rope you know parents think we all think that these are all skills but fitness per se is just a concept we should think of fitness as a skill okay so that skill needs to be imbibed and that is how kids will get physically literate so physical literacy is having the knowledge being motivated having the knowledge of fitness being motivated very naturally and being able to pursue various physical activities throughout life and it becomes part of the life is lifestyle is what i strongly believe is this is the definition and it's it's a universally accepted a uh, concept now but when we talk of fitness as a skill is something that we really need to kind of you know have a lot of discussions uh, and you know like these kind of conversations on it is not just uh, having knowledge of healthy habits or you know eating the right thing it is being self aware the child needs to be aware of his own body right what is how fast is the child how uh, well balanced is the child how he is able to is 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 uh, for example i'll talk about my own child uh, he felt he was very aware that he is not as fast as the other kids and he is not being able to kick the ball uh, right into the goal post as good as well as the other kids so he had that awareness right so that is the second step after that the child needs to come to us and involve the parents and uh, you know tell us that i need to fix this whatever the problem could be a flat foot right so uh, the child will not be able to diagnose that there is a flat foot so the child at least as long as he has that awareness has the knowledge and has a motivation to get better and right. wants to pursue that particular activity and get better and better at it that is right. i think it's the core uh, definition of uh, you know physical literacy i think that is how i would put it as a very right. small example but uh, uh, also at the same time so this is one part where the child wants to get better but there's another part where there is also uh, humility and self compassion if the child is not able to achieve that later on how does he how does he cope with say an inability to get it or not being able to kick hard enough or some kind of muscular or a neurological problem is diagnosed in the child so even that is also being literate or being knowledgeable about how to cope with these kind of failures so that also is included in being literate enough so all right. these skills are part of the entire complex uh, of uh, you know having that uh, skill i'm sure so can, uh, can i you ask know, you this question uh, why we are talking about being aware and having so much of uh, knowledge about skills and all of it is it a bigger challenge uh, for 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 this to be um, you know you at a more ground level or a rural structure versus a metro or a city where uh, we assume that the level of um, awareness is slightly more or perhaps the curiosity or the ability to um, indulge in it is far more Uh, so metros definitely uh, because there is education very easily accessible uh, there is a definite uh, awareness is there because what i would say education is there facilities are there but again we are also very comfortable and we are spoiled in the metros right because we have easy transport we have buses and we have cabs so it's uh, so there are pros and cons but uh, in the non metros or in the rural areas i guess uh, the facilities may be less but uh, there may be very unintentionally uh, equipped physically literate individuals 
they may not be knowing that they are physically literate but yes uh, they are they are walking uh, you know two miles away to the school and they are Sorry. using their cycles and they are doing a lot of work at home there's a lot of movement so I'd say yes. the movement literacy uh, is much more in the rural areas and right. which is very very sparse and very scarce in the metros and right. so that's how the pros and cons are in the metros and uh, in the rural areas right so are there any systems that actually can be used to highlight the perspective of physical activity for life we we need to really change our systems <laughs> so i think we will get there in the next few years a lot of systems need to change at the grassroots level and from the top level which is the government level so it's it's like a i would not say it should be from the top at all it everything starts from the home everything starts from our society with us as parents right um the support to our children will be not from the prime minister or from the government it has to be from us mums and dads right. so i mean i would just like to give another example uh, of uh, i've heard this on another talk uh, where sachin tendulkar in spite of having a time table which was full of english maths and science he managed to reach where he is today uh and he did it in spite of his school time table right so there are lots there are hundreds of sachin tendulkars uh, who are there but they are not able to reach there why because of the school time table if we are able to communicate to the schools that we need to change this you know you have your english math science that is also required but if you are trying to incorporate coding and your uh, financial literacy which is also required please include physical literacy as the most essential part because if your body is not healthy how are right. how are the kids going to do better better coding for example so right. we need right. to make sure that uh, the systems change for sure and small things like uh, in between two periods take a break of 5 minutes of doing just jumping jacks or right. uh, tell the children to play hopscotch in that 15 minute break or give some kind of a motivation or reward points in you know the schools have this blue house yellow house and green house yeah. so give those reward points include gamification in the houses itself you know include right. that right along with the school uh, schedule your time you will make these small right. small changes in your home and in the school and that's yes. how a whole revolution can start uh, in that way. yeah it's a very conscious um, choice to keep moving to keep being active and to make this little cultural shift that we are now get to also for going forward with where we are with our kids so when with with all of these things what are the challenges which you have faced in executing your mission and vision or apart from when you mentioned uh, you know the online schooling that we have all got into and the little challenges um, or the changes that you had to make what do you think can be changed or added going forward with this challenges are going to be there uh, see the kids are, are quite overwhelmed with a lot of activities uh, parents uh, they want to give the best to their children but at the same time uh, by that uh, you know in that effort to make them uh, you know the, uh, give them the best i think we are making them too comfortable so even i am guilty to some extent for that but uh, you know it's it's a challenge right from the parents mindset to um, to the pe teachers who are uh, you know they they need to make these very conscious changes in their uh, school how they are delivering and we have had uh, challenges in you know being accepted by certain schools uh, you know this program and uh, it's it's a little difficult because our school systems are set in a certain way so that needs to change it is not that they should take only our program or specific any other program it is that they need to make those those changes within their schedule and within their uh, framework 
so right. that framework changes needs to happen with a very good leadership at the top of any school right. right so whoever is the decision maker in the school because schools is where a child goes for education and right. education is physical education as well as all the other kinds of education so that's it's where the challenge is and that is the mindset change. Change. yes and absolutely in the it's complete development where we are all looking for our children to sort of uh, you know like we say the overall development of a child which includes every aspect of mental and emotional and physical health um so before we end this uh, interesting conversation which truly cannot really in in a way because this is only just the beginning uh, perhaps a small conversation that you and me have begun and maybe we can have several such conversations with a lot more people to actually uh, talk or probably never be able to emphasize the importance of being physically fit and active uh, what tips can you actually give to a lot of people out there who are probably going to be watching and hearing uh, to make a choice to be physically fit or to take it as a lifelong process okay so uh, fitness uh, is something that is has to be a part of your daily routine movement uh, is not just about the exercise that you do for 45 minutes or half an hour or one hour it is the entire 24 hours of one particular day it is even the sleep that you have even focus on the kind of movement that you have throughout the day take your breaks in between your zoom classes or even while you're sitting in school or in the office be aware of your body uh, be aware of your mental health but don't be too hard on yourself the tips are very clear that we need to congratulate for every small win be happy and always you don't expect praise to come from outside and be very self uh, driven as well as uh, i this concept of self love uh, which is uh, i don't think uh, it should be taken uh, very you know uh, we should not be flippant about it it's definitely a very important concept and uh, instead of waiting for the external uh, validation be very very conscious and be happy with what you have been able to achieve even if you are able to do 15 minutes or 20 minutes of skipping thrice a week and that's an achievement you know so yeah. don't be too hard on yourself because that's where a lot of people then lose confidence lose the motivation and then they give up so as adults we need to mature and uh, you know we need to kind of uh, you know help uh, our children also to look up to us in that sense uh, and be practical there are a lot of challenges in today's world uh, you know we we cannot be too hard on ourselves and uh, have small goals and not very six pack kind of goals we should be able to then be happy and still remain healthy and fit i think that's uh, the only advice i would like to give thank you thank you so much it is absolutely uh, wonderful and from this motivating and insightful chat today in fact we are all taking away the importance of being physically active and fit as a lifelong choice and and very rightly as you said that it is not the one hour alone that you put in uh, as a physically active hour but it it spread across your 24 hours as a choice so thank you so much for being on the show with me today and thank you everyone for thank watching you. and supporting me and go beyond support to subscribe like and share our videos and posts to be able to reach out to more people see you soon with another inspiring conversation thank you